everyone, and welcome to another episode of Real Flutus with Flutronics. Today we're really excited because we're sitting with the lovely and fabulous Jasmine Choi. Hello. Thank you, Jasmine, for being here. Thank you um, for having me. Of course, it's a privilege. Yeah. We're so excited that she was in town and can sit here with us today. Um, so Jasmine, if you guys don't already know, is an international soloist, and she's recently become the principal flutist of the Vienna Symphony which is an amazing accomplishment. So we're really excited to yeah, we're really excited to talk to her about all of the great things she has going on. So um, Jasmine, so why don't we start? Um, what is it like being an international soul yeah. and balancing a <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> It is demanding. I, I have to be really on top of all my schedule. I have to be very organized with timing because otherwise if I don't think about it, I just wouldn't find any time to practice learning uh, new pieces. And also on top of that, I'm going to this uh, German language school every day, three hours. Oh, yeah. Three hours in the class. It's a whole then, other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mark for another two hours and then on top of that I have a rehearsal in the morning, in the afternoon, and concert at night, and different uh, different program the next morning, so I need to learn another whole score. So it's keeping me busy, but mm -hmm. it's what makes me myself, and that's what I feel most happy, mm -hmm. and I'm very content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're actually the first orchestral musician that we've had on the show. Oh, really? Yeah, it's exciting. Ah. yeah it's super exciting. Yeah, so I think, I mean, for me, I really just want to know, like, what really, like, what's what's it like being an orchestral musician? Like, what what's really different about it, and like, what's the reality of being reality. an orchestral musician? Um, it would be different between orchestras, but. I think when the orchestra, the bigger the orchestra, the more concerts they play. So it's very easy to actually trap in the whole orchestra schedule because every day we're rehearsing, every week different program. And for example, Vienna Symphony, we have two different programs going on. So in the morning we play uh, one program, afternoon another different program and concert is the program that we played in the morning. So it's quite time consuming and also you have to know all the parts, not even your part. You have to know what is going on all around you in case anything happens where the conductor doesn't give you the beat where it, where it should be. <laughs> yeah. So you just need to be prepared and um, if you don't enjoy what you do, it, it might be a very difficult job, mm -hmm. but if you do enjoy it, it's all good. Yeah. You know, it's very nice that you get to play every day with your good colleagues and good conductors, great music, yeah. right. and that's actually um, the other part that I really appreciate as being a musician, because there's whole another great, great repertoire out there, just not just playing the flute repertoire, mm -hmm. it's it's good, a lot of them are good, but it's like another whole world opening up for you, mm -hmm. it's, it's so many great symphonies, and also there are a lot of piano or violin concertos, most of the time, mm -hmm. I don't know why they always put piano or violin, 90% of time, but yeah. it's all great music, and I learned so much from the guest artists and um, my colleagues, and I learned how to balance out between when I have the solo, mm -hmm. or it's this chamber part, or the tutti part, it has everything in the orchestra, and you have to know uh, right away which is what, and you, and you have to be like a um, chameleon um, camouflaging itself, changing different colors, um, you have to be very flexible. Mm -hmm. And it also gives me a great ideas when it comes to my solo concerts. I can uh, put this in interpretation and this inspiration into my flute playing uh, when I play solo sonatas and so on. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like it takes a very um, specific type of 
personality to to have an orchestral job, like realizing, you know, that being on top of um, where you are, what's going on, um, the the schedule, the demand. When did you realize that this was what you wanted to do, and that you were the type, you know, you were that type of person who was, you know, cut out to do it? You mean as an orchestra? Player? Yeah, as an orchestral player. Um, if for me, I was very lucky to actually start my solo career very early age, even before I moved to America. I was only 13, 14 mm -hmm. in Korea. I was touring with the orchestras, and then it just didn't occur to me that I wanted to become an orchestral musician up until I came to Curtis. Mm -hmm. I studied with Julius Baker and Jeffrey Kainer. Both of my teachers were in, you know, such great major orchestras. And from then on, already from my first year at Curtis, I just wanted to become like that and them. So it was like a vague dream for me. Oh, maybe one day I want to play in an orchestra just like them. Yeah. And I went to Philadelphia Orchestra concert every single week, every Saturday. and. Every time I was so fascinated, it was mm -hmm. so amazing. I admired every single one of them in the orchestra. So it was a far dream for me. And at the same time, I was still doing more solo works here and there. And then I went to Juilliard. And um, when the Cincinnati position was open, I just wanted to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made me more comfortable when I didn't expect anything. I was very comfortable at the audition. And that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. you know, I was like, wow, I got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was like, a, um, it wasn't like giving a joy. I was like, too much of a shock. Mm -hmm. I was like, like <laughs> for, for the whole, I don't know, next half an hour, an hour or two. The juries came out one by one to greet me. <laughs> Actually, several of them asked me, "Are you happy?" Like, I just yeah, didn't expect that. But afterwards, I learned so much in the orchestra, and I got so much more passionate about being an orchestra musician. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, I know that like a, a very big topic for wind players, of course, is mm -hmm. the orchestral audition process. Right, right. Um, did you do a lot of auditioning before you got the Cincinnati job, or I don't know, maybe describe to us a little yeah, bit your sure. experience with orchestral uh, auditions. Before Cincinnati, I did a lot of summer auditions. Uh, I've been to PMF and NOI, National Orchestral Institute. Mm -hmm. PMF is Pacific Music Festival yeah. in Japan. Um, and so forth, Verbia, Aspen. So I basically only learned excerpts for the summer festival before that. Mm -hmm. And Cincinnati was my first real orchestral audition. I Before, I actually planned to um, do more auditions, but then somehow I couldn't make the dates. Mm -hmm. And some auditions, I could make the dates, but then I was like, oh, I'm not ready for this mentally. So mm -hmm. well, I'm not going to win, so I just let it go. Mm -hmm. And Cincinnati was the first real audition, and I think for the audition, it's for everybody, every instrument. Um, it's important that you feel comfortable when you audition on the stage. But after Cincinnati, um, I don't know, I got very uh, nervous afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's all in your head, I think. If you're really comfortable on stage, I think you would play uh, the best your ability. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, also in concerts, I think, um, yeah, you just have to calm down and don't think about anything else. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. focus on the music and what you play. Easy to say. Yeah. Right, of course. <laughs> I have to say, having seen you play in concert before, it's very evident that that's how you are on stage. I think that's like a very good thing because you also portray that for sure. It's, it's, definitely, it's good. It puts the audience at ease too to see you, you know, feeling confident because you love playing the flute, and that's really 
what your performances are all about. Yeah, so it's really yeah that's <laughs> what I'm trying to do. Because uh, when the performer is nervous, it's all um, transparent. Mm -hmm. That audience can hear, they can see, they can feel. Yeah. Instead yeah. of hearing the music, they, they feel your anger, anxiety, yeah. and oh, you know, <laughs> that to happen. Yeah, definitely.